Hello everyone. Welcome to this practical pathology series from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. Well, this is also the continuation of the skin non-melanocytic uh, cancers which I discussed in the earlier tutorial, right? So this will be the part 2 of that. So I have clubbed this one along with the practical pathology series. So the topic which I am going to discuss is basal cell carcinoma. We will be discussing about the clinical features, the morphology and a bit about treatment and prognosis of basal cell carcinoma. See, the basal cell carcinoma is the most common form of skin cancer, right? This is a locally aggressive cutaneous tumor, mainly affects the white people. Usually in around fourth to fifth decades of life, males are slightly more affected as compared to that of females. So they are rare in dark skinned individuals. Uh, that's because of the protective effect of uh, melanin, right? So we have uh, had discussed uh, in detail about the pathogenesis of uh, skin cancers, right? Now, majority of the basal cell carcinomas, they occur in head and neck region. See, the most common location of the basal cell carcinoma would be above the line drawn from the angle of the mouth to the pin of the ear, okay? So, anywhere in this region, you can expect basal cell carcinomas to be seen. Just a tip uh, to you students that, you know, uh, whenever you find a nodule on the upper lip, you know, consider basal cell carcinomas as one of the differential diagnoses, whereas the nodular ulcerative lesions found in the lower lip, you can think of squamous cell carcinomas. Of course, this might not be true all the time, but most often the upper lip lesions are basal cell carcinomas and the lower lip lesions are squamous cell carcinomas. Okay, these basal cell carcinomas, they usually occur singly, but can be multiple. So coming to the clinical appearance of basal cell carcinomas, they can be nodular type, you know, that's when we call it as nodular basal cell carcinomas, where they might be, you know, they can be skin colored or reddish nodule, as you can see here, with surface telangiectasia, which means you can find the dilated blood vessels on the surface of these nodules. So whenever you find such lesions, consider basal cell carcinoma as the first differential diagnosis. Okay, this is another lesion where you can find the nodular elevated lesion with dilated blood vessels on the surface. This is very characteristic of a nodular type of basal cell carcinomas. Uh, an ulcerating type of basal cell carcinomas can be in the form of a huge ulcer in the same region as we discussed earlier. These ulcers have rolled border and the ulcers are often covered with crust. So, uh, this is an illustration showing a nodulo ulcerative lesion situated above the line drawn from the angle of mouth to pinna, right? The ulcer looks invasive and destructive and because the tumor nibbles away the skin like a rodent, this is often referred to as rodent ulcer. So, microscopically, this is just an illustrated image of basal cell carcinoma. Microscopically, these tumor cells are basaloid. That's why it's called basaloid tumor. They often arise from the epidermis or can be from the follicular epithelium. Okay. So these are actually nests of tumor cells. These are basaloid cells and they have a very scant cytoplasm. They have elongated hyperchromatic, that means darkly stained nuclei. So these are all these basaloid cells. And what is more important is that you find the peripheral palisading. We'll discuss about palisading a bit later. Okay, and another interesting feature of basal cell carcinoma is you find this peritumoral clefting. Okay, so this is basically a retraction artifact because these tumor islands tend to retract. And often you might find presence of myxoid stroma. So moving on to the higher magnification, what is important is that the presence of peripheral palisading. Now, what is a palisade? Palisade is basically a fence of wooden stakes or iron railings, you know, which are fixed in the ground, which forms an enclosure. Similarly, look at this, that's a palisade. Similarly, the tumor cells in the periphery, you know, they form a sort of enclosure, okay? And that is called as palisading. They are arranged parallelly to one another, enclosing these tumoral islands. So this characteristic peripheral palisading of basaloid cells is seen in basal cell carcinoma. So let us see a virtual slide of basal cell carcinoma from pathpresenter.net. What you can see at this magnification is, can you make out that you find these basaloid cells in the dermis, right? If 
you carefully observe these cells under higher magnification, you can easily make out that these tumor islands peripherally, you know, you can find this palisading of nuclei. So that is the peripheral palisading which I was talking about, right? So this is the peripheral palisading which surrounds the tumor islands. So another feature which we discussed was peritumoral clefting. You know, can you make out that you find these cleft like or empty spaces, you know, around these tumor islands. So that's an artifactual clefting which is usually found in basal cell carcinomas. Again, you can make out these parallelly arranged nuclei, that's peripheral palisading. So that's the microscopic, you know, evidence of crusting which is found on the ulcerated uh, basal cell carcinoma. So this bluish tinge, what you're looking at is evidence of myxoid degeneration. So if you remember that basal cell carcinomas are basically made up of uh, islands of tumor cells within the dermis, which are basaloid cells and they show peripheral palisading, peritumoral clefting. That's enough for you to understand what basal cell carcinoma looks like on histology. So how do you treat these tumors? Usually by electrodesiccation, surgery and or radiotherapy. The prognosis, as I told you, these tumors do not metastasize, but they can be extremely destructive, you know, as it invades deeper tissues. Sometimes they can involve or destroy the underlying bone and even blood vessels. And because of invasion of these blood vessels and destruction, sometimes these vessels might bleed and that might be the cause of death. Sometimes infection can also be the cause of death in these destructive tumors. So that's all about basal cell carcinoma. If you have liked this video, hit the like button, do comment, don't forget to subscribe and do share if you find this video useful. Thank you. In the next tutorial, I'll be discussing in detail about the pre-malignant lesions of skin and the squamous cell carcinoma. Bye-bye.